that very thing that is stopping you from doing it, you can turn that into being the reason that you do. Hi, welcome back. All right, so you know what? I wanted to do a bit of a different video today, um, as you can tell by the title. I figured it was worth it because the last time I did a video called, um, what do they call it? I'll put it up here, I lost my job, I think it is. Something like that, it's right here. It struck a chord with a lot of you and I thought it was worth off the back of that kind of doing some almost like a spin-off version of it and telling you just what it takes to to do this to be freelance to work for yourself I worked a nine-to-five job before I didn't like that job and I had to figure out a way to do what I loved but I didn't know how okay so that is what this video is more about and it's more about just the reality of it a reality check so if you want to see the step before this I'm going to link this video down below for you I'll put it up in the card as well if you click up there it will open into a new tab so this won't disappear you can just have it ready to watch next I just wrote down on a notepad literally these are all the things that I have learned through either you quit or you get laid off or you get fired and you end up going it alone you get pushed off that cliff and you just freelance what is it really like so these are the points and I hope that this this strikes a chord with you. If you are in that position where you're not sure what you want to do, maybe you don't like your day job, uh, you have considered doing something on your own, you already have a side hustle, how do you go further? Maybe there's just a, a nugget you're gonna hear in this and it will help you to just expand and go further. So, without further ado, I'm gonna kick off with the first point. The first one is that it's not overnight. I had to write these all these points down so I don't get it wrong. Um, it is not an overnight thing. Um, I started my blog, where did you get that.com, which is right here, and I still have it in 2009, February of that year, right? So, right at the very beginning. We're now in 2021. That was just a hobby for me. And it slowly snowballed into being a side hustle with my nine to five job. And then from there, after I got laid off, which you will get the full details on in the video I said linked below, becoming my, my full time job. And success does not happen overnight. And it's also, what do you define as success? For me, I just wanted to be able to pay the bills. And that was it. If I could do that, that to me is success. Because at that point, you're able to financially support yourself doing what you actually love. It took me years, no lie. I had built up a safety net first financially with my nine to five job before I was laid off. So I was able to, um, and that wasn't something I happened to do. I just did that intentionally because I knew when I had that nine to five job, I was eventually going to leave. So. You have to be able to just do the job and do it without having a paycheck and knowing it's coming. So that's where you need that safety net to rely on in the beginning so you don't have that mental anxiety of thinking, oh my gosh, why am I not rolling in the dough? Why, don't, why am I not able to like take amazing trips and do this and the other? That's not what this is about in the first place. This should be about what you love. So it takes time, it takes patience, and it takes diligence and consistency. So know that it's not an overnight thing. Most of us, it's not, it doesn't happen overnight. You have to crawl before you walk, before you run. And those are the steps that it should be. I don't think I would have wanted to be able to just skip from zero to running. I'm sure there are those who do have overnight success, but I think some people who do have overnight success, I think that's where they're most likely to even hit stumbles and roadblocks in their, in their careers because they have not gone through that beginning part, that learning part. They just got thrown in really a short truncated space of time into millions of followers and all that kind of stuff. And with that can come unexpected ability to just handle that whereas if you kind of like walking into it and it's a gradual organic build-up I think you're set up for a much more long-lasting um, meaningful lasting career I think for me it took um, it took quite a few years of I wasn't represented by anyone I was doing this by myself and figuring out when brands started to, to approach me I didn't know what to charge what to ask I know all that now and if you want me to do a separate sort of 
in depth on that kind of stuff, let me know. Give me a thumbs up or actually leave a comment below saying, yeah, do a, do a part two so I get an idea on stuff like that. But I know that for me, I was literally just pulling numbers out of my ass. Sorry, but I hate to say it, but I just didn't know. And brands will often accept it because they know you don't know and you don't know your value. So, you know, and you're afraid to ask as well. So it, and those jobs weren't coming fast and furious. They were like once a while. Sorry about that, the noise outside. I was living off of what I had already built up savings wise. So yeah, so it takes quite a while um, and just know that and go into it knowing that this is not overnight. Point number two, what do you love to do? Do what you love. That is probably one of the biggest takeaways I will give you in this video. It has to be something that you would love to do and do already probably do without being paid for it. That is an indication of what you love. It's why they call it almost a hobby. It's because it's something you just naturally enjoy doing. It's something that takes up a lot of your time in your spare time because you just love to do that during your spare time. It's something that you probably spend hours a day, at least a few minutes a day or a week doing because it's just something that you naturally enjoy. I know for me, I've always loved playing with clothes, styling clothes, different price points, whether it's high price points, medium price points, really low price points and just taking them all into a big bowl and just doing that and just stirring, just mixing them up and just seeing what kind of outfit am I going to get. You know, I love that kind of, you know, I just love that. That is so me. And listen, look how animated I'm getting just telling you that. What is your animation point? What is it that makes you just, as you start talking about it, you love it? What is that one subject where if you're at a dinner table and that subject pops up, you start instantly joining into that conversation and you can almost start leading the conversation. Do you know what I mean? And they start listening to you because it's a subject that you naturally enjoy talking about. That is your little gift right there. It's something that is personal to you. If I was to go into an office and go to every single cubicle and ask every single person sitting at their desk, is this what you love to do for a living? I bet you, I mean, I don't know because I've never done it, but I bet you at least half maybe half will say no but you know i needed the job i needed that steady paycheck and then you turn around with a second question what is it you actually really love doing take money out of the equation what is it you love to do and then get their answer see how different it is or similar it is to what they're actually doing for their day job so you've got to do something that you love because it needs to be able to sustain you through those times when you are not being paid for it it needs to be able to take you through those times where you've got to stay up late work around the clock because you've got deadlines to meet. it needs to be something that you just naturally love to do because that is going to be your spine that is what is going to keep you doing it for a living, it's going to keep you wanting to do it for a living, it's going to keep you motivated and to keep you consistently doing it. You've got to love it anyway because if you're pretending and trying to freelance doing something that you don't love and you know deep down because you can't fool yourself, maybe you can fool some other people for a little bit of time but you can't fool all the people all of the time as what Marley once said and you can't certainly fool yourself. It has to be something that you truly love to do, definitely stop the excuses a lot of people who don't try or want to try and do something freelance is because they say that for example i just take what i do okay i work full time as a content creator i do youtube videos i have instagram i have my blog i also have pinterest i have facebook twitter you name it all these things all these different platforms and i do this full time now you know touch wood touching the floor but there are friends who I've spoken to over the years and they say to me, oh God, I'd love to do that, but, and then listen to the but. They'll say to me, oh, but, you know, I don't look like you. Oh, I'm not skinny enough. Oh, I'm not young enough. Oh, I'm not a size zero. And they say, I've heard them say these things to me. And I always say to them, it doesn't matter. I know it seems easy for me to say, but it is easy for me to say because I would have said this in fact, I did. I said this to myself back then. I didn't think I was pretty enough. I didn't think I was a size zero. I'm not a size zero, by the way. But I don't think, I didn't think I was, in fact, that's not even nothing to do with it, what I look like. It's about do you love it, which is back to the other point I said, I said before. Do you love it, whatever that subject is? Stop making excuses and putting it in front of yourself. Oh, I'm just not um, pretty as pretty as her. Well, she can do it well because she's this, because she's that. You can do it too, because what you have is exactly what thousands of other women and millions 
of other women and men are saying about themselves. So when they see you do it, they're going to think, wow, she's different, she's doing it, she looks like me, she's actually a real, realistic type of, type of person, finally, someone I can relate to. That's who you're going to be. And I've said this very same thing to my friends. So, you know, just, sorry, I'm getting kind of animated. But just bear that in mind. You have to be careful to, don't make the excuses because the only thing stopping you is yourself. You're putting yourself in front of it. Um, and you're finding all the reasons why. And that very thing that is stopping you from doing it, you can turn that into being the reason that you do because other people will relate to it. Number, is this three? I'm not sure. I'll put points on the screen as I get to each point. <laughs> Create a safety net. Yes, and I know I touched on it earlier, but to be freelance, you have to be able to budget, you have to be able to set yourself a safety net in the beginning. If you currently have a full-time job, you have to be able to save yourself a good, I would say, at least six months savings so that you're able to have that financial safety net for you to be able to mentally feel okay and relieved and the sense of okay right let, let me see if I could do this let me go for it and you know you've got some runway to be able to do it so do that I know that for me before I was laid off my job I think it was about not a year but like earlier that year like a good seven to eight months before that date um, I was already starting to save money because I was already starting to think in the sense of God, I don't like this job. I'd love to be able to like quit one day Maybe if I can just start saving from now because I know that if I do this full-time like, you know Trying to be freelance. I'm not gonna have that money in the beginning So I used to save every I used to get paid once a month and every single check I would pay the you know Whatever the bare minimum I needed and I would just save all of it and by the way I did live with Michael at the time and he's never been my sugar daddy. In fact, he was freelance as well and he wasn't doing that well at all. So we were both, I was actually the one that was had the safety net. I was the one between the, the relationship that had the, the nine to five job, the guaranteed monthly uh, paycheck that was coming at the end of the month, the health insurance. You know, I was the one that had the benefits. He didn't. He was freelance and he was struggling. So it wasn't like I could say, oh, I've got Michael too, so at least I can ride off of him and have, you know, his safety net. No, he wasn't the safety net. I was the safety net. So this kind of touches on the assumptions about me video because a lot of people think that, you know, you know, Michael is a sugar daddy for me and I married him because he's a sugar daddy. You guys could not be further from the truth because it's actually the, I'm the one who makes the money in the house. But, you know, it's just, don't think that you look at someone and you think, oh, well, but she had that. Don't assume anything because you don't know and you're only just making these assumptions, which is a projection of what you wished you had or you're kind of putting excuses in front of yourself by looking at what somebody else you think has because they don't. So for me, it was about spending less, cutting down on my spending, um, saving my money and having that safety net. Have that safety net financially to help you build your confidence to be able to do what you want because we all have a rent to pay, mortgage to pay, you know, car to run, car notes, you name it, we've all got those things to, to cover. So make sure you have that, that runway, I call it, so you can able to jump and take that leap, leap off of the cliff. Stay motivated and don't give up. That is my next point. Kind of touches on what I said before, and it ties into naturally doing what you love to do and um, you know without being paid for it. But be consistent and don't give up. Uh, there were times, and there was one time in particular, I remember sitting on the sofa downstairs. This is when we didn't own, we didn't rent this whole house. This floor, I'm on the second floor, was rented out to tenants, and we lived on the ground floor only. I sat down on the sofa downstairs with Michael, and I literally said, I don't know if I'm going to continue doing this, because I don't see the point. You can't see your future. And this was several years ago, and I, and I couldn't see it. And... I was struggling trying to get that next gig and not getting paid much for the gig that I did manage to get. And I was doing it myself. I was finding those jobs myself. And for those who did come to me, no, I'm not crying. For those who did come to me, you know, I wasn't able to figure out how much to, how much to ask for. So, you know, it really was a case of me trying to just figure out 
what, what am I doing? And it just, at one point, I felt like I hit a wall. And I honestly thought of just, I looked at Michael and just thought, maybe I should just stop doing it. But I didn't. I didn't stop because I knew this is what I loved. So I was sad to think about that, to contemplate that, because I knew that I loved this. You know, I wasn't fooling myself in that sense. I knew I had found something I loved. Because I was doing it anyway on the side. I used to go out doing my lunch hours, you know, when I was working my nine to five, and go shopping and go home, tip that bag up on the bed and just mix and match clothes. I found something I love to do. It wasn't the shopping. The shopping was the vehicle to what I actually love to do, which was styling and mixing things up and playing with clothes. And I knew that that's what I loved and that's why I chose to not give up and to continue. The next thing, yes, when you're doing freelancing and doing this for yourself, you have to take into account all the things and all the responsibilities that your company gave to you before when you had that employer that you are now giving up. That is, you're assuming all the taxes, understanding individual taxes, business taxes versus group taxes, the way that you was able to have that absorbed for you by the company, you now have to take on that responsibility of figuring out taxes for yourself. That is one thing that you, you just, I have to do, every freelancer has to do. Every single person you watch on YouTube, every content creator who's, you can think all day, you know they do this full time, they're all doing the same thing. Retirement, you have to think about that because you're no longer got that 401k kind of setup where a business helps to contribute to your 401k. You've got to think about doing those things for yourself, setting up your own, which I have. Accounting, you need an accountant if you're doing like the taxes, if you've got to sort out what is a business, what's expenses for that business versus personal expenses. If you don't have a good head on your shoulders and you're not good with finances and you just don't want to be able to take on that responsibility as well as do the creative side of it, then you have to think about hiring a really good accountant to help you with getting all those kinds of things in place. Yeah, and this also just the fact that there was no one to tell you how to do this. It's kind of the, the shit you kind of have to figure out for yourself. So there's no one to tell you how to do this. You've got to just kind of figure it out yourself. You talk to fellow people who are in the same sort of business as you. They can help you. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. And so and that's happened to me. And then you've got to like figure this ish out, this out for yourself. And what is it that you've got to do to make this work also there's lots of videos even here on youtube on this platform how to just type in how to and what is it the thing you want to figure out there's obviously a lot of videos that help you with that too the next point yes this is an isolated job you are now working for yourself you are probably going to be working at home and you are alone if you don't have a partner you are definitely going to be by yourself it kind of makes sense it's just you and your hobby your, your job, sorry, and your computer. So you no longer have that thing, that engagement, that interaction of fellow co-workers around you and just that kind of like being out and about with other people who are in the same office environment as you. You're doing this by yourself. So you're spending large amounts of time, majority of your time, all by yourself, creating content at home and pushing out there to other people to see around the world. But essentially you, Karen, I'm just by myself. I have Michael, my husband, but if he wasn't around, and he's not always around all the time, he's sometimes not around, he's out. I am alone, I'm doing it by myself, and I started this by myself. And I still am, I still sort of see it that way, although now I've now started to hire people to help me. But that took several, several, several years down the road. But a freelance job is still uh, an inherently isolated or not say lonely, I don't say lonely, but you are, you're doing this by yourself. So just bear in mind that you are, you don't have those co-workers to help you. You don't have that same clock in and clock out life with other people you can do that with. This goes on to the next point. The hours of being a freelance are completely different to when you are working a nine to five. There's a reason they call it nine to five, eight to four, 10 to six, nine to six let's just say nine to five, is because those are generally office hours when you are working in an office but or a corporation. But when you are freelance, you often, in fact, not even you often, hands up if you are a freelancer, you literally work round the clock. You very rarely switch off. I never switch off. Since I am doing this full time, there isn't a day that goes by that I'm not thinking about my job. Not one. I don't mentally have a day off. I'm always thinking about 
what's the next shoot? What's the subjects I'm gonna talk about for YouTube? What am I going to post on my Instagram? I've got to think about who do I want to collaborate with, approaching those brands. I do have management now, but I still am heavily involved with understanding the business side of it, working out what the deliverables are for those jobs, what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing. There's just a whole, it's the business side of it that's going on in the background that it, it means that you're just seeing the, the photo at the end is the pyramid, the tip part of what was underneath that pyramid, which led to that tip, which is a photo that you see on Instagram for that sponsored post. But you didn't see all the administration, all the negotiations, all the reviewing of the contracts back and forth, just all of that that went into the background of doing that photo. So, and doing that, multiply that over other platforms and each platform doing it multiple times. So that's what's going on in the background and the round the clock thinking, it's just always there. You work from nine to five to 12 to 12. It, it's just, I did an all nighter last week before I flew out to California. I remember the night before I had stuff to do. I had reels to edit, I had stuff to, to finish. I, I just had so much to do that I ended up just pulling an all nighter because the flight was like, we had to get up at 4 a.m. It was 11 p.m. and I was like, there's too much I've got to get done. So I literally just stayed up and I slept on the plane. You know, these are all the stuff that nobody tells you about because it's not like the pretty glamorous stuff, but it's the stuff that I'm doing all the time. So, you know, I, I gotta tell you about it. That dreaded Sunday night feeling when I had a nine to five job is gone. And that is the flip side of it because I didn't like my nine to five. And when you don't, you know that dreaded Sunday night feeling that I am talking about. I don't have that anymore. But at the same time, I don't have that clock off on a Friday, got the weekend to chill out, not think about my job, and then clock back in on Monday. The week and the weekend blurs into one. And I'm always thinking about what I'm doing. In fact, today is a Saturday and I'm filming a YouTube video. I'm still working, essentially. So there is no clock off for me. Probably if I get a bit more disciplined, I'll be able to start doing that. And I know that's an issue. That's something that I need to think about. I'm not perfect, but be able to clock out like a Friday and give myself a weekend. I should be able to do that. And that's something that I've got to personally work on for myself. But just so you know, that round the clock, when you're a freelancer, that will start to kick in. You work way more hours, but I would rather work triple the hours, which I do now, than have the nine to five job, which I hated, and I could clock out at five o'clock and I could do whatever I wanted afterwards. I couldn't stand that job, so I'd much rather take on the risk of doing what I do now and work way more. You have to be able to have a thick skin mentality, especially if you are working in front of the camera. I'll apply it really to that. So if you're doing a freelance job that doesn't involve you being in front of the camera like I am, then this statement won't apply. When you're working in front of the camera like for me, if you want to sort of consider doing what I do, be prepared for people to hate you. I got this quote from, is it Kelly Catrone? I think it was from her, she's a PR publicist. She was on, a, I think it was Bravo, she had that fashion channel for a while. She said, once you, once you put yourself out there with the public, be prepared for people to hate you. And it's gonna happen, it's happened to me, and it'll happen to every single person who works in front of the camera. So if this is something you want to do for a living, expect it and know it and just ride with it and have that fuck it mentality because it's going to happen. I'm never gonna be able to please everyone. I know that. I'll never please everyone with every video I make. It's just not gonna happen. And I'm not out there to please everyone. Let's put it that way. I'm out there just to find my tribe, to find the people who are interested in what I'm interested in, um, not to please everybody. So you're going to have haters. You're going to have people say, oh, Karen, your hair looks terrible. Why are you wearing that wig? Oh, you've gained weight. Oh, you've lost weight. You're so skinny. Oh, you need to eat a donut. Oh, you're buying luxury stuff. Oh my God, I can't believe you did that. Um, or, oh my God, you're buying cheap stuff. I can't believe you're supporting fast fashion. Oh my God, I can't believe that you're going away again. Oh my God, I can't believe. Insert, it's going to happen. You're going to get the haters. Just expect it, know it. They're gonna comment on your personal appearance. They're gonna comment on the things you say. They're gonna comment on the things you don't say. They're gonna comment on the things you buy, the things you don't buy your lifestyle, everything. Just know it's gonna happen. I remember, I wish I kept her comment. 
there was a, a black woman because she said she told me she was she dm'd me on instagram and she said to me you know karen you've inspired me to go for it and try and do you know do be like a, an influencer or a content creator because i love i love luxury she said that was it um and she said i've always wanted to do it so i tried it because you know i, I love what you do and you inspired me to just go for it you know and she says, but what I wasn't expecting was how quickly I got so much criticism. And she goes, I was surprised. I got criticism from like people who I know, like friends and family. And she goes, that really shocked and surprised me. Did this happen to you? And I've even started to get it from like, you know, the odd stranger, even though that I don't have a big following yet, I've noticed it. But I really noticed it the most from people who I know. And that really shocked me, like kind of like belittling me and making me feel, poking fun out of the things that I enjoy. You know, I replied back to her um, and I told her exactly what I've said to you. It's going to happen, but if you enjoy doing it, you just got to just, just say, you know, it and just do it. Because at the end of the day, these people aren't here for you and they're here to bring you down and just do what you love. Because eventually those people will quiet away and they'll start to just leave you alone because they can see that it's not affecting you. And you start to get traction. You start to attract people who do love to see you and just yeah just know it's going to happen roll with it it's part of the course it's part of working in front of the camera there's people the celebrities not everybody loves every celebrity and they know that they're doing what they do because they love it I'm, I'm assuming they do and they found their own tribe they found people who do actually like what they do so that's it just just know that just know you're not going in to try and please everybody because not everyone likes oprah and there you go just use that as your motto. Not everyone likes Oprah. Look where she is. This is a scalable job when you work freelance, at least talking about the one that I am doing now. This is a case of the more you put in, the more you get out of it. The harder you work, the more you stand to make. If you are consistent with, say, YouTube or consistent with any other platform, okay, I'm just saying that because this is the platform I'm talking on, the more you work, the more you are likely to be rewarded because of your consistency with doing it. People will show up when you show up. It's like watching your favorite TV show. And also, you are not paid based on the hours you put in. You are paid based on the quality that you give. So I think the whole point of that is trying to say like, if you can create one quality video, one quality, I don't know, whatever it is, channel as a whole, branding as a whole, that is where you are going to be rewarded versus having to do multiples of something. It's the quality you do versus the quantity of you doing it. So there's like a, a fine line between being consistent but also having to be able to put the quality out there. This is one career or one job in terms of the freelance life where you can do that, where you are rewarded for it. It is one job whereby you can also scale so that you can take one topic discussed here and you can multiply it over different platforms. I can turn around and take this subject and repackage it and put it on TikTok. Repackage it and put it on a reel on Instagram. Repackage it and put it as a, a blog post. And then take that blog post and pin it to Pinterest, amplify it even more. LinkedIn, if it's a relevant topic, you could turn around and put this on LinkedIn. And then you're attracting business sides of people who are interested in hearing what you're saying, thinking, wow, that was very interesting what Karen said. Who is this Karen? Anyway, I loved her subject, blah, blah, blah. They turn around and share that with their co colleagues in the industry. It's the amplification for me. I think that is it. I think the last thing I'm gonna say is that the first years will be the hardest. They were the hardest for me and they're the hardest for most, I think, who are freelance. And it's the same reason, you've got to crawl before you can walk, before you can run. Um, and that's how it was for me as well. It takes time and it was flipping hard in the beginning. I told you before, Michael was a freelancer. And when I got laid off from my day job, he was a freelancer. So it was two freelancers in this house, paying a mortgage and the bills. You know, and I think I mentioned it in a video before, but you know, there were winters where we couldn't afford the heating. <laughs> I love, I shouldn't laugh about that because it's not, it wasn't funny at the time and it's really not funny now. But you know, we literally borrowed the neighbor's heater because we weren't bringing in enough to afford being in this home. And I'm not talking about having luxury things. None of this was here. All this stuff you're seeing behind me, studio space, doing a clothing line with them you know there's none of that none of that none of that was there none of it 
okay? I was shopping at H&M and Topshop. That was it in the beginning and thrifting a bit. And I was not able to, you know, help to get things going financially. So that was how it was for me in the beginning, but I loved doing what I do. I loved I loved filling that hole. I loved filling that void with doing what I wanted because the nine to five was not filling that void, but freelancing was. But I just wanted to drop in some, just some points about just the reality of it. Just knowing that you do have to save to start before you do it. You do have to think about taxes and um, accounting and uh, retirements and all that kind of stuff. I'm at the stage where I've now got to think about um, that for other people. Um, and hiring other people and the responsibilities that that takes for me to try and grow because I'm at that phase where I just want to grow I've got other things that I want to do keep doing what I'm doing but there are other things that I want to do as well and I really want to be able to to touch on and to, to just develop but I can't do those all by myself I'm only one person I've only got one pair of arms I'm not an octopus I need to hire other people to help me so that I can continue to create the content that I want, give you the content you want, and also, like I said, create new um, business verticals that I'm interested in developing. So I think that is really the, the takeaway of all of this, is that for me, I'm in that growth phase of developing other things that I want to do, and let's see, touch wood, how those go. But in the beginning, it really is about just a, finding what you love to do for a living. What is it you really love to do? That is what you should be doing for a living. And if you want to go for it, do it as a side hustle in the beginning. Keep your nine to five. But maybe you already are doing it on the side. This is something you do as a hobby anyway. See if you can turn it into a side hustle. Sites like Etsy, you know, you can have like an Etsy shop and sell things that you like to, to do on the side. That can become your side hustle. eBay, wherever it is, just think about those things platforms are free to start YouTube is a free platform to start you are exposed to millions of people around the world who will see that you love to knit who will see that you love to talk about a bag that you love to talk about sofas that you love to talk about decorating you love to talk about paint colors I don't know what it is whatever it is that you love to do there are people out there trust me there are people out there who love to hear it too and you are for free going to be able to, and I say for free because you can actually just record on your phone. Whatever device you're actually looking at on me now, you can use that same device to record this video, probably. It's not about the expensive camera, it's about the quality of the content that you're giving the viewers. And that is what they look for and that is what they'll come back to you for. They want to see that. I could just keep going on and on, but just find what you love to do and then think about it from a budget financial standpoint and just bear in mind all of those things that I was telling you before but that is it I want to do this video because I felt that you know it's nice to do a check-in every now and again and to take stock at least for me of where I was and share that with the when I um, was laid off my job and then fast forward to where I am now and also pause and tell you what it's like for me now that I have done that flip side and left my job or was quit was laid off from my job and what it is actually like to do this full time and it is hard work it's a swan mentality you see the gliding of the swan on the surface of the water but you don't see this going underneath you don't see the swan's legs doing that and that is what your legs are doing every single day <laughs> but I like it I love it I wouldn't have this any other way. Once you've had that taste of being able to support yourself and work for yourself and not rely on anyone else, because my mom has always been a big believer of that. And I walk the walk that she told me, which is don't think you need a man to support you. Have your own money, have your own, have your own, have the ability to do it by yourself financially. You should be able to stand on your own two feet and do it by yourself without needing somebody else to lean on or to financially help you in that sense. Anyway, I don't want to keep talking too much because I feel like I'm, I just rabble so much. Give this video a thumbs up if you felt you were meant to hear this video and if it struck a chord with you. Tell me in the comments below, is there a side hustle or a hobby that you love to do and you just don't, don't know how to take the next step? Tell me what it is. I will read your, I read every single comment every single YouTube video I get. I thought it was good to do a video like this and just do a, a kind of a check-in and let you know 
you know, it all seems like rainbow and unicorns and sunshines out my ass, you know. Oh my god, here is my new Fendi bag that I got, and oh, let's see what's inside of it. And <laughs> it's not that, it's way, way more. It's way, way more than that. Find what you love to do, all right? Focus on that. Don't look left, don't look right. People start to talk, to talk about you and make fun of you. So what? I was made fun of when I was a co-worker in my day job. They laughed at the way I used to dress because of a casual work environment and I used to wear all kinds of like fashionable things and I guess they just laughed at me, but you know, who's having the last laugh now? Do what you love, do what you love, okay? All right, that is it my love. I want to be able to put that video out there. Um, if you thinking about quitting, watch this video. Hopefully you will see this video before you say I quit. All right, take care and I'll see you on Friday.